There's a little project I've been working on for Murray's book collection. It's a book called Toys, painted by W. Trier and described by O. Seifert. And um, this is one of those cheap Indian reprints. So what they do is find these books, scan somewhere online, download the scans, and then present them as books that you can have made. Presumably they're print on demand. Um, and they're not that expensive. I think this was eight pounds. That might have even included the postage from India. The problem, as you can probably see, is it's not printed square. That's not my camera work. It's actually out of square. Uh, it's also not great paper, but it's okay. Um, but the problems increase. There's one section of the book where the text, as you can see, <coughs> bleeds off. It's been cut. It bleeds off the left hand side for several pages. I suspect that's one sheet. During the printing it slipped. Might be okay if you bought another copy, but you don't just don't know. And also there's other weird things like as they've assembled it, this is the text that relates to plate twenty-eight. The plate 28 is actually on the next page, so and then there's a blank page. So they've got the pages wrongly arranged. And the other thing, of course, is that the illustrations are in black and white and were originally in colour. So, a kind of useful, still a useful reference book for a reference collection. Um, what I'm planning to do is cut the book cut the spine off so we've got all the pages separate I've managed to find the book on the Internet Archive and it's in colour on the Internet Archive and you can see why Mo was keen to have the colours the coloured versions of the pictures um, colour balance is probably a bit off but it, it's not bad colours are all there so the plan is I've put two of these on an A4 sheet when I made the PDF so that it was a pretty cheap printout um, for the what will be 40 plus pages in the book and um, so I've got that on to about 22 A4 sheets now I cut them individually and then we'll bind them all together uh, with the good text sheets from the black and white copy of the book. The wonky text sheets I'll get printed out as well. And then I'll make, I'll sew it all together and make a little hardback book. There is also originally, there was also originally uh, an illustrated cover, a tipped in colour picture on the hard board of the cover. So I'm going to do that too because we've got the colour a scan of the colour cover so all in all it should be a little fun little project um, the way that it's been scanned and in fact the way that it was originally printed I think the illustrations are all over the place on the page the margins are all different sizes so I've just got to do the best I can to make something that, that's better than the print on demand black and white wonky copy
So each piece of text and each plate become one section of the signature. I'm not going to try to be clever and have them interleaved to create more usual sort of four or eight page signatures because basically there's a lot of scope for getting mixed up bearing in mind that every other time you turn over you're getting a double page blank spread. So um, I'm very good at making mistakes doing things like that. So keep it simple. If that page is facing this page, and that's what's going to be sewn in, I can check the numbers, and that's going to be right. I've marked this board, uh, top and bottom, and the centre fold line. So the page that needs the needle holes is then lined up top and bottom and squared up here <clears throat> and then this sheet comes over and it's marked up with where the holes have to be made so that can be done quickly and easily because there are more than 40 of them to do And it's time to use the sewing frame, which is a very simple frame I knocked together a few years ago. Um, it could be sewn, this could be sewn without a frame, it just makes things a bit easier. And I'm using, this is not special book binders thread, it's just a thread that I got from a local junk shop. It's, it's old but it's tough, um, it's still strong, I've tested it and I've waxed it with a candle, the length that we're likely to use. Just get that organised with the uh, ribbon that we're going to, the tape that we're going to sew onto, which is this, which is just half inch ribbon from a local haberdashery shop. We still have a haberdashery shop in those things. So cotton ribbon, very cheap, 30p a metre. Well, we're halfway there, that's up to plate 20. 
and it's going to have a thick spine, of course, with all those guards. So the text block is now sewn, as you can see, and I've added the mole to give it strength. Now, this didn't squash down as much as I would normally have squashed down a spine because, because it does this because of all the guards. If you put a board on top and try to press it, it all just goes squiggly to use a technical term. They all just, all the sections just come out at different places. So it's um, it's a deeper spine for two reasons. First of all, because of all the guards and also because it's not pressed as much as it would be, but that means the book will open more easily and stay open, which for a picture book especially is a good idea. For that same reason, I wasn't able to trim the edges together, top and bottom, because it's um, just impossible once it's been sewn to actually get a flat edge on there, that will, a cutting edge on there. So um, I trimmed them individually. I was intending to trim the fore edge together uh, by clamping the book and then trimming that, but text is quite tight in places where I've used the original pages from the Indian print-on-demand copy so decided not to trim it won't matter that they're rough all the way around like an old-fashioned book sometimes was next thing is to glue some craft paper onto that spine for further strength and this is rubbed down with the bone folder Make sure it's engaging, sticking really well with every section there. That's about done now, as you can see. For this and uh, for the general gluing of the spine, I use PVA. Just ordinary straight PVA. The cover was also online. It was a bit messy, but I've um, tidied it up in Photoshop and printed it out so I now need to cut that when I say the cover I mean the colour picture that was used um, on the cover of the original book so that gets applied to the book cloth so here's the cover I misplaced the centre strip a little bit of a mess there but I won't show um, so, next thing is, and that's the final stage of gluing the text block into the cover. Now, when I've done that, you can see what the problem is. Really, just in terms of, first of all, not going to be able to press this in a conventional way. Uh, and secondly, on the bookshelf, it's going to be a bit awkward. I might have to live with that or I've got an idea. In terms of making sure that the glued end papers um, actually stick properly without being pressed on, I'm just essentially going to roll them uh, with a roller and, and uh, a pad or use the bone folder or whatever. Um, we'll do something that's acceptable and effective I don't think I don't think I'm going to do a title spine the thing is the picture that's going on the front which is this I made from a piece of scrap card I made this and um, pressed the cover with that on which is fractionally larger than the picture. The idea that that would make an indentation so that the picture when it's glued on there is slightly recessed and less likely to scuff off. That's a fairly standard technique in book binding. Um, 
it didn't really to be honest do very much there's just a hint of a recess uh, mostly what showed up was the tape that I used to stick this on <laughs> yeah, but that won't show once the picture's on there however I think the picture on the front will be okay it's not going to be pulled in and out of the bookshelves too many times if I was intending to do this as a run of several copies or, um, I'd make a metal version of this to impress the, the uh, background on the cover properly but as it's a one-off that seems a lot of work to do and I think we'll just take a chance and, and put the picture straight on there here we are the, the boards very slight bowing of the boards but of course once I've glued in the end papers that should correct itself similar problem with with the spine if I stick a, a title on there but perhaps I shall stick a title on there in which case I'll have to make it because the original book didn't have a title on the spine or at least we don't have access to it if it did so a couple of decisions to make but essentially so far so good I could have made a rounded spine instead of a square spine but it wouldn't have helped very much actually the key to my solution or semi-solution uh, or should I say the clue to it is this piece of balsa wood which happens to be wedge shaped it doesn't have to be wedge shaped but it's fine if it is and that's what I happen to have so I'm using that and this little bit of foot cloth finished book I think that's going to have to have a dust jacket otherwise that picture is going to get scuffed off as it goes into the bookcase and then there's this the mysterious block with um, a little trick so there we are and the secret of the block of course is magnets hidden under here and under there so that can be placed in there, not when you're reading the book, but when it's due to go back in the bookcase. And then it keeps it square, keeps the boards parallel. So I will make a dust wrapper with a title on the spine and with that picture on the front. Um, but in the meantime, that's done.